seen it so once we get started I can I can give you a little more coaching if what I'm about to do isn't isn't uh, precise yeah. enough so real quick just to remind you guys your first rep when you switch it's your first rep get into the arm bar and then after that just reset the arm bar what I mean by that is so in the gi there's a specific type of arm bar I like to run first at least it's the first one we we teach so let's pretend Adrian's got a gi on for a second he's protecting his throat I make that hook grip on the sleeve right that's really good for the pull action so the first arm bar I usually teach you guys, especially in the gi, we're gonna pretend he's got a gi top on. I would hook that one grip, which would allow me to pull his hand. I'd cup the elbow. I would come up under his armpit. I would sit on him and lean heavy, which makes my leg light. I could come around, boom. Now that's also effective in no gi. However, I have to rely on less of a hook grip since I obviously can't grab his uniform and I have to go with the C clamp. When things are sweaty in no gi, my grips are compromised. This is a lot harder pull to trap the elbow. So the, the one that we talked about the other day was if I'm here in my skydive or I'm in a low mount, whether my legs are locked under his butt or I'm running a grapevine, my hips are low, so this is a low mount. It gives us a little extra control, but also gives me a chance to hit my underhook. Two underhooks, and I'm gonna walk my hands up. Now remember, I can gable my hands, I can butterfly. Some people will go elbow to elbow, but as long as I can get his arms over his head. Now I run up to my mount, my high, high mount. And now I lean heavy on one leg and I slip my S right. And again, I'm always squeezing with my arms and squeezing with my legs. <laughs> then I can isolate the arm I want. Now I can lean and throw it over, but I have extra control. Post. Now just extra bonus. On Monday, I had you guys slip this around and lay back. But just so you know, I can also lean forward and finish the arm bar right here. So I have a lean forward arm bar or a lean back arm bar. Now we're going to hit the arm bar once. Now I'm going to come up. Adrian's going to get to a lock with his hands. Remember. No double C's. I want spoon grips, a true gable. This is not a gable if my thumbs are out. My hands are a lot weaker, so make sure that we're getting to a gable grip. Okay, first one that we're gonna recap. Let's talk about the arm position really quick, and this is very common. I'm looking for the arm. He wants his lock down low. So as I'm putting pressure, I slide inner elbow to inner elbow. I have some leverage here, but this works with his gable. A gable, is like this. It works really well, the hooks, but the farther the hands get away from the chest, it's just the fingers holding on, they're easier to separate. So when I do this, if I'm ever here and I slide elbow to elbow, I can use my other arm to pummel. And remember, I want the inside of my, I know it's a weird name, people call it the elbow pit. My elbow pit, and I'm not just trying to get up to his wrist and grabbing, I'm throwing my elbow in the air. Why? Because the farther his lock is away from his chest, the weaker the gable. It is that simple. So I'm here. Now I could just come back or let's run the heel press. I put my heel in and my toes out. I try to connect my heel to my shin so there's no space. If I come here, it slips off. So I put my heel to my shin, I pummel in, and even if I have to pummel 12 times, I keep this up. Now it's not just, remember the discouraging term I like call dummy pressure, idiot pressure. It's not just, uh, I'm gonna put pressure on it and do a series of pops with my shoulder and kicks with my feet. Isolate, come back if the thumb is here. Bro shake him, finish hips up to create the fulcrum. So there's one, I'm gonna let him gable grip again. I'm gonna pummel, high, foot press, pop, 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 pop. Two, I'm gonna do five on this side, five on that side. So this is our simple foot press on the bicep. Five, five, switch partners, five, five. So if it, Adrian just did five on me and five on me, now it's my turn, my very first feet, I'm gonna run my arm bar. Underhook, underhook, make him signal touchdown, hit him with the tombstone. Inchworm, lean, S ride, post. Arm bar. Now I come back up. Now I start my five. One. So on and so on. Sound good? All right, guys. Ready? One, two, three. Okay, so now 
we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna get one rep by getting into the arm bar and I'm gonna finish it and then I'm gonna let him work back to the catch. So the same thing, I'm in here, skydiving or otherwise. Hook, hook, finger walk, come up to the, I always call this the tombstone, right? Boom, and why do I do this and not just here? Because he can start to shoulder walk and wiggle back out if, I, if, he, if he wants to. So I'm always gonna cap him so that he can't travel up. And why do we call it the inchworm? Because inchworms do this. I don't wanna do this. Walk my knees up because I relieve pressure. I'm squeezing with my legs, hit him with the tombstone, and in one motion, I'm gonna push him down as I slide my knees into the armpits. Now I squeeze and sit, lean, S, and I'm hugging. I'm squeezing with my legs, hugging the arms. Sometimes people can take their time here, right? Boom, boom. Once you get good at this, you don't need to post a hand on the mat. I can just transfer my weight and come around. But if you need to post a hand for now, that's fine. Also look how I'm dragging his elbow. Why am I doing that? If I don't drag his elbow, he can gable grip. If I do drag his elbow, I can isolate the arm. I elbow, sit back, Juji Gatame. Boom, one. Now he comes up. Now last time we talked about pummeling high elbow, tying my hand in, bringing my elbow high because the farther his lock is away from the chest, the weaker the gable. We came here, pop, 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 separate the hands, finish the arm bar, turn him thumb up, hit the fulcrum. Now we're gonna go right back and give us a chance to re-rep. I call it the varsity elbow drag, why? Because the simple elbow drag, the JV if you wanna call it that, is I'm in here. Where I'm in here, I stay forward, hug the arm. My other hand makes a spoon grip. I'm gonna pull his elbow as far as I can first before I even start to lean it in his back. So this is the simple elbow drag. Pull it, look what happens to his gable grip. It gets weaker. Now I'm just gonna use force to kick my legs and separate the hands. Boom. That works, but with people with a really strong gable grip, it doesn't work as well. So on Tuesday, we talked about pull over. So I'm in here, I'm pulling. Maybe my simple arm drag doesn't work. He keeps his elbow really active. I can't, he won't let me drag it. Okay, so we're still gonna pummel. Watch what's gonna happen. I come over the top, I sink my elbow low and tight. My hand comes under, hooks the elbow. This is still an elbow drag, but I put his gable in a weak position. Now it's the same thing. I drag this elbow as much as possible, and now I straighten my legs and lean back. Separate the grip. Sometimes I will end up with a supercharged arm bar. Remember, on a supercharged arm bar, I get more leverage, but I cannot control the angle of his thumb. So if he doesn't know and he keeps his thumb up, I can lean back and break his arm. All he has to do is turn his thumb towards, his, towards the wall pads, and now his arm bends. So if this ever happens, I just cup, swim, and turn it into my standard arm bar. Again, he grabs, okay? I pummel, pummel, come over, tight. Don't let your elbow come out here. I won't have enough room to sneak my hand in. So I come over and tight, snake my hand in, pull the elbow, and I use my elbow high. If my elbow stays low here, it's weird. So once I get to this, I flare my elbow, sit back and separate, and either have supercharged or standard arm bar. Same thing, guys, we're gonna hit five on one arm, five on the other. When it's Adrian's turn, he feeds one, double underhook, S right arm bar, and then five and five. Sound good? I will come around and help you. One, two, three. Okay. So given our time, the last one that we're gonna do today, I'll save you guys some time. Same thing, when you get in. Tombstone, inchworm, S ride, squeeze, post. I can come forward, I can sit backwards. I'm gonna hit my first arm bar, turn the thumb up, hit the fulcrum, boom. Now we're good to go, okay? With this one, this is gonna require a little bit of like, just like a single leg. I've gotta be like, okay, this leg is forward, I'm shooting on this leg. Same principle. I need to read the gable. Let's, let's break something down, the cram to begin with. It's harder to pull people's hands through each other than it is to pull them apart. The gable has a strength and it has a weakness, which is separating the palms. This principle is not that hard, but there's, it's more of a visual application first. And then the physical application is gonna be a little bit easier. So I'm gonna look at Adrian's palm. His palms are gonna come apart a lot easier this way than if I try to push his hands through each other. So in other words, if I do this backwards, I'm working with his gable grip. So I wanna work away from the gable grip. The principle, the concept here is to separate the palms, okay? My favorite firefly, my favorite bug is trapped in here. I need to separate the palms. So before I just start separating the palms, and we're gonna talk about the arms here in a minute, let's read the elbow. His humerus bone, right? You got one bone that goes from here to here, and you got two bones that go from here to here. It's not funny, but this bone is called the humerus. All right, so his humerus is usually gonna be about center to my pelvis, to my hips, to my central line of my body. I need to read the palms. So I need to take this hand this way. I could leave his elbow in the middle, but that's gonna give him a little bit of play. So I've always referred to this as a slip and a rip. I'm gonna slip his elbow to one side and I'm gonna rip his palms apart. So watch what's gonna happen. 
his hands because of the particular way that he's gabling. And if his gable was backwards, I would do this the other way. So we'll show it both ways so we can get the concept. So he's here to begin with. I need to bring his hands apart. It means this arm that I'm going to attack, I need to bring this hand this way. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my lock. Watch my other hand. It's going to cup the inside of the elbow. I'm going to shift it high on my hip since I'm going to be leaning to my right. I'm going to slip it high. So I slip the elbow over. And when I do, I don't just slip it over. I lean forward and I create a notch so I trap his elbow right there. Now, my other hand was here anyway, but instead of going straight back, I'm going to lean my ear down by his hip first. I'm going to go straight to the side. Now I have a free hand. So I'm in here. None of this stuff is working. I'm going to slip the elbow, lock it in, and lean forward. I'm hugging. I'm leaning forward. Now, my other hand, since I want his palms, this arm is going to rip his hand this way. This hand is going to pull his hand this way. So he's on the center line. I pummel my high elbow. I slip and lock. My other hand comes up. This hand is going to pull this way. But instead of going back, I'm going to drop straight sideways. So as I'm pulling him here, I'm going to drop to the side. And now I just round out and I come up. So we'll show it a couple times each side. So we're back to the same game. I got to read his palm. Slip, trap, pull, and lean. Now I'm ending up on my side like this. I could finish the arm bar here, but now I want to control and round back out. And then I would just finish. So again, he goes to that gable. I got to read the palm, slip, trap, rip, finish. What if his gable's the other way? If I do it this way, I'm pulling his palms together. So what does that mean? I need to transfer the elbow to the other side. Stay high. I'm pulling and I'm going to drop this side this time to separate his palms. Here, here. Ooh, the arm popped. I barely pulled it. So we're always on this particular one, guys, where I'm slipping the elbow and ripping the hands apart. Slip and rip. I don't know. It rhymes. It's like shake and bake. <laughs> the idea is to never pull their gable through. It's not going to happen, but I can pull their gable apart. Remember, the gable is really strong like this, like two hooks. It is not strong because I only have my fingers to hold it. It's not strong if I separate the palms. So I won't even look. Go to a gable. First thing i got to do is read it. Okay, slip the elbow, come here, pull, lean, round it up. What if it's the other way? I gotta read. Elbow goes to the opposite side. I'm coming in here, here, but I particularly like to have this here. I'm gonna pull, lean, round it up. Simple stuff, but I guarantee it will take you guys a couple reps. You just gotta read the poem. Take your time there. If it takes you three seconds to read it, so be it. If you can look at it and do it right away, that's the name of the game, okay? We're gonna put six minutes on the clock for this. After that, we'll grab fluids and we'll do some rows. Ready? One, two, three.